You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, you can uh, subscribe to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed on our website over at quicksurf.com. Uh, the show notes for every episode has a subscribe heading and the links to uh, subscribe to those feeds are there in the show notes for each and every episode. So just go to the latest episode you see there on the homepage over at quickstruff.com and you can subscribe uh, there. You can also find us online over at YouTube, uh, blip.tv, dailymotion, uh, stitcher.com and tunein.com. And, uh, so if you want to subscribe over there as well, feel free to do so if that's your platform of choice. And you can email me, linux at quicksurf.com, if you have feedback for uh, any episodes of the show or if you want to send me any uh, links or anything of that nature for consideration uh, for inclusion in the show, feel free to do so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Over at Digital Trends, I ran across this uh, story here uh, it's entitled The Best Linux Software Are Favorites for Any Desktop Environment. I thought this was good. This is uh, pretty nice, particularly for someone who's a little potentially new to the Linux environment or the you know Linux platform, and they, and they don't really know what they don't know, right? I mean, there's we've all had those uh, situations where we're, you know, we're new somewhere and we don't really know what's available and what we need and, and that sort of thing. So this has a nice rundown of some of the best stuff for a lot of common things. Uh, security being one, uh, creativity, audio, video, office communication type stuff and utilities and that sort of thing. Great read. Definitely check it out. Um, particularly if you're looking to try something a little different or those of us who've been doing this for a while, a lot of the things on the list are, you know, pretty well known to us, but this is really great for someone who's maybe a little less experienced from PC world in their Linux line blog, Skype for Linux 4.2 aims to deliver more polish. It's been almost a year since Microsoft moved its newly acquired Skype for Linux out of beta with the release of version 4.0, surprising more than a few Linux fans with its apparent commitment to maintaining a telephony client for the free and open source operating system. So 4.2 is now available. It's a little more uh, spit and shine, if you will. Um, definitely, if you're a Skype user on Linux, give it a check. From Polygon.com, Unity supporting a Linux-based platform, Tizen. Unity Technologies, the company behind the Unity multi-platform game engine, will provide support for Tizen, the Linux-based open source mobile operating system. The develop deployment tools will allow Unity's community of developers to create games for Tizen-operated smartphones and tablets and publish them to the Tizen store later this year. So, pretty awesome. Uh, I've got some more Tizen news coming up, but first, we are going to talk about something else uh, that is pretty neat. Over at musicradar.com, Traction 4 for Linux has been released. Now, Traction... The reason, only reason why I'm including this is because I've been a long-time Traction user. Traction has, is a uh, digital audio workstation software. It comes with, you can buy it separately, I believe, but if you buy any Mackie Onyx products, uh, Traction comes with uh, those hardware solutions. And it, it works with more than just Mackie products. Um, it's awesome. You know, in terms of digital audio workstation, music production, it's got a simplified user interface that really, for the most part, gives you what you need and gets out of the way. And uh, 
you know, like I said, I've been along. I actually, back when I was doing just audio only production of Linux news log and a bunch of other podcasts that I used to produce, um, traction was my go-to because I had a Mackie Onyx 400 F, uh, digital, uh, interface. Um, and traction was my go-to piece of software. It was awesome. It's multi-platform. Obviously it works on windows, Linux, OS 10, um, great piece of software so traction 4 for linux has been released if you want a great daw and you want to do it in linux traction is a very robust uh alternative or option uh for those of you who want to try it out and maggie isn't paying me anything just so everybody's aware but uh pretty awesome over at PC World in their Linux line blog again, uh, there's a $99 Linux stick that turns any HDMI display into a virtual desktop. Hard on the heels of the news that Dell's Project Ophelia Thumb PC is expected to ship this summer, a thin client vendor, Devon IT, has rolled out a similar contender of its own called the Scepter. It's like Dell's device. It's $99. It's designed to plug into any HDMI compatible display or monitor. It's slightly larger than a USB memory stick. And the multimedia capable unit can then transform such a device into a zero client virtual desktop. So uh, Dell's device uses a Linux based Android. The Scepter uses Devon IT's own Linux based zero client operating system known as ZTOS uh, to let users access their virtual desktops. Pretty neat. Definitely give it a try. From International Digital Times, images of Samsung's first smartphone running Tizen operating system gets leaked. That's right. Uh, back in February uh, during uh, Mobile World Conference in uh, Barcelona, Samsung officially announced a new Linux-based operating system called Tizen. We don't yet know if it's going to replace their Android offerings, but uh, Tizen, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is a collaboration between Samsung and Intel to provide a, a Linux slash open source based operating system for mobile devices. So it has been rumored that Samsung will announce its first Tizen running smartphone somewhere in July or August. And there have been leaks popping up of this first smartphone running the Tizen here online. Uh, you can find those leaked images uh, if you follow the show notes. Pretty cool, if you ask me. I'm uh, kind of curious to see what Samsung and Intel are going to do with Tizen, um, seeing as uh, Samsung has, for all intents and purposes, effectively forked Android uh, from Google. So it'll be interesting to see if they're going to use it for higher-end phones or if they're going to use Tizen to just straight-up replace Android or phase it in to replace Android. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Only time will tell. Uh, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. Again, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. If you have, thank you so much. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.